Hey guys, it's uh, Lee FX Model Miniatures uh, back again, <clears throat> and um, yeah, something a little bit different today. Some of you may wonder why you're staring at a really scruffy piece of styrene with a load of uh, lines scribed in it. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, step outside any form of comfort zone today. Uh, I know some of you guys always feel that maybe looking at filming replica replication, you're out of your comfort zone. So I'll join you today and I'm going to get well out of my comfort zone and try something um, completely off the cuff and yeah, something I'm not very adept in. And I'm going to paint this piece of styrene in various techniques to resemble something from Star Wars. Now, um, what I want to try and cover is initially base coating, okay? Um, going too heavy or too light with base coating, I want to try and approach that because on a few miniatures, base coat is used in various ways or some colours are used in various levels. Um, recently Guy uh, Cowan completed a cloud car some of you may have seen it's very few colors on the model but the way they're used uh, I believe one is rust rust is used in so many varying ways and uh, thicknesses almost um, by way of coats that it looks so different all around the model yet it's the same paint from the same jar so what I'm going to be doing with this is I'm going to be putting this uh, very dark Archivex roof brown enamel on this. Now some of you may know already now what I'm going to try and attempt to do. Uh, but initially we're going to put our main base coat of roof brown on. And then what I want to do is show the differences in thicknesses that you'll achieve with using the same base coat which is what I see in the reference on this model but then some of the other techniques the, this little panel uh, don't worry guys uh, I'm you know this is not accurate yeah it's just a few random scribe lines on a piece of styrene I'm not trying to build the sand crawler I've got no intentions of building a sand crawler I'm just trying to just put across a few techniques that we use on very many models that we paint but this one is out my comfort zone but it also contains a lot of differing techniques like we've got two different uses of the base coat we've got a lot of streaking uh, by way of masking we've got a lot of streaking by way of freehand artist brushes we've got a lot of topical work by way of um, uh, the orange, the reefer orange that's um, scattered all around the model. There are various blacks, there are various, uh, there's levels of grime, there's misting on it. There's all sorts going on on this. So what I thought, it might work, it might completely fail, but let's see. But initially what I'm going to do, I'm going to just put a roof brown base coat across this. Not too heavy, but we'll just start from there. Right guys, I've got now Archive X uh, Roof Brown in my brush. Fairly thin mix, you know, the usual orange juiced and milky substance. I think John prefers I think orange juice, don't you John? Yeah. Gets that sugar rush. Right, so what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna base coat this now. Just a light passive base coat. Let's have a look. Yeah, it's coming through. I'm shooting at about 20 here. About 20 psi. So let's see how we go. Probably a bit wet. 
got some mung coming through, but let's not worry about that. Let's not worry about that. Give that a little bit of drying time. I think my airbrush needs a blooming good clean, to be honest, this one. I'm using a Tamiya one. A wide trigger. <laughs> but I haven't used it in a while, so it's probably a bit a bit gummy. Uh, but uh, for what we're doing here, it doesn't really matter. Let's get some hot warm air over this. Okay, so excuse all the speckles guys, I really think this brush is, ugh, it needs a good sorting. But we'll get some more paint through this, get another coat and see how we go. Oh, okay guys, just another, another pass. Right then, let's give that some warm air. Okay, right, now we've got just a rough base coat, just a very light rough base coat, nothing elaborate, it's just a couple of thin passes of roof brown, as I said excuse some of the speckles there, I think there was some uh, uh, crud in my brush, but or it could have been dust on the styrene. <laughs> Probably was that actually. As I said, this is not a uh, you know a super refined filming replica. It's just a scrap of styrene. I'm just gonna you know just put some really simple techniques on, which may help a few people. May not. You may think I'm completely batshit. I uh, don't know, <laughs> but um, yeah, it's just a bit of fun, you know, some, just some very crude applications, and um, if I'm deadly honest, if you look at a lot of ILM paintwork real up close, it is very crude. So what we're going to do now, um, I'm just going to give this another touch of heat, just try cure it a little bit, uh, just so I can apply a little bit of masking tape. Uh, hopefully and get this shot um, but yeah we'll give that a go now and I'll show you what I mean about using this same base coat which here looks kind of very it's going brown but it's also clay it's a bit blotchy in places and it's exactly kind of the, the kind of effect you want you don't want this base coat too thick especially using this color as I said I've never I've, I've tested some sand crawler colors I've never actually had a you know a real more serious brass you know tax warts and all brr, go at it, but that's what I'm going to try attempt here. Um, so yeah, I'll give this a little bit more heat, and then I'm going to try and mask a few panels off using the same colour. Try and get the effect I'm looking for. Right, guys, that's a little bit drier now, and I'm going to use some just really. Um, Excuse me while I just take this out of the way, just so I can get a line on it. I'm just going to use some really cheap 
painter's masking tape, you know, the real cheap, low tack stuff. You know, no frills. You don't want too much tack on it anyway. But we're not painting up, um, you know, a, an Enterprise uh, refit or anything here. Not that I've ever painted one of those, but, you know, we're not going for that level of <laughs> crazy Aztec pattern. Hell no. But let's just, you know, just roughly masked one up. And I'm going to go in now and create, hopefully, a lot of the darker panels. So I'm basically saturating that panel now. mask and you get my point so instead of now using um, the base coat in just a light nice application what you're now doing is you're taking the base coat and you're applying it in a manner where you're almost uh, doing a paint swatch you're actually finding you know, the real, you know, the true hue of the paint, which is what these panels will start approaching. And what I'll do, I'll, I'll, ju I'll just roughly mask, um, mask a few up, guys, and we'll just, we'll just shoot them. As I said, it's not, this isn't about being neat, this isn't about being pedantic, it's just about doing a few panels using the same base coat to achieve you know, a little bit of a of a paneling effect so I've just masked a couple of real rough real rough guys you know there might be seeps there might be runs oh, I don't yeah you know, I don't care whoops and I've run out of paint <laughs> I'll be right back. Okay guys, and we're back, and I've reloaded. It's a good job my airbrush isn't a pulse rifle, or I'd be in real trouble, wouldn't I? Right, so yeah, we've saturated that one. Saturate this one. Ta-da, okay. Bit of heat. Just take the uh, the wetness out, and then we'll get the uh, masking tape ripped off. Okay, so you get the general idea now. And what I'll do, I'll do, I'll just do a few more. I'll just break up the, uh, just break up some of the uh, the surface, so to speak. As I said, this isn't accurate to the sand crawler. It's just a few random. Um, random panels just to get a rough effect and a rough idea of uh, initially your base coat To do two different things for you, you know. Okay, so there we have it. So if you imagine, let's turn that compressor off. If you imagine that's the side of your sand crawler, you've now got one colour doing about I don't know three different things. You've got you know your your lighter spots here. You've got your primer coming through more. I can't actually remember, I mean, sand crawler. I don't know much about the subject, if I'm honest. But um, I can't remember what colour ILM actually uh, primed the model, if at all. It might have been white underneath, actually. I've used um, just a light grey U-Pol acid etch primer on this, and it's just white styrene. But that gives you an idea now. You've got this sort of patchy 
uh, base coat. No frills, you know, you're not looking for a, I mean, if you imagine the Sandcrawler is a massive beast, it's a huge model. So you're gonna paint one um, with an airbrush. I mean, yeah, John Simmons will teach me all about that. As I said, John's gonna be painting one of these at some point. And I can't wait for that. Um, yeah, but this isn't about me showing how to paint a sand crawler. This is just me trying to just get a few silly little techniques down, but using this kind of color palette. Um, you know, John will show us the way how to paint a sand crawler, but I do feel this is the base coat. But anyway, like I said, with the base coat, roof brown, it's doing several things all at once on here. Yeah, but then. We've got these panels marked off here and there are some darker panels on the crawler as well which you know we'll look at um, shortly um, so okay I'm gonna let that dry for a bit uh, and then we'll go in and uh, we'll probably start doing some streaking and stuff um, there's a lot of downward streaks on the crawler a lot of weathering um, so we'll probably start with some of that um, get that applied um, I'll start working on that maybe in grime, light grime, and just show some of that. As I said, some of it I believe is masked. Um, same as like the uh, the Atat walkers. If you look at the side of the Atat walkers, yeah, you get asked how how are the streaks done. Well, a lot of the streaks are in fact masked off. They're just you know finely masked uh, airbrush streaks. Then some of them are further blurred with the airbrush or washes and whatnot. So it's all it's all very 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 simple um, techniques that are thrown together to create these amazing, just amazing paint jobs that were done by the likes of Joe Johnston and oh, Mike Fulmer. Maybe. Oh, so many. There's just so many to list. You know, they were all just amazing artists, but. The actual techniques they used were just very, very simple. It's all very topical, um, but we'll get to that shortly. But um, yeah, what I'll do, I'll uh, let this cure for a little bit, and we'll just start maybe uh, doing some of the streaking and uh, see where we go from there. As I'm not even looking at reference to do this, so I'm not, <laughs> you know, I'm not looking at any reference. I'm just literally going from you know what I see and just using a few colours just to have some fun. So right. Catch you in a bit. Right guys, that's about dry enough for just some very light masking now. And as you can see, scruffy masking doesn't matter. Quick and simple, because we're just going to be doing some streaks. Okay, so I've masked a few up already. Just some sharp points. Yeah. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to put some Archive X Light Grime in those fairly thin we'll see how this goes it might be a bit thick but yeah we'll see okay okay so I've just blown grime into those and then what I'm going to do I'll just demask them I'll get some fresh tape in a minute and show you just how I'd approach this okay so you're starting to get these little run patterns okay so working from this one Just going to do the same thing again. Just moving it along. Just creating what I see in my eye when I look at the reference, you know. So I'm just, I'm just even reusing the tape, you know, it just, it, it's just, uh, just working fast. Just 
working my way along. Oops. And as I said, this isn't accurate to the crawler. You don't have to uh, phone me and say, that looks nothing like the sand crawler. Not meant to be. It's just a few simple techniques just help you know create something in a vein that ILM may have so that was just a quick miss that was yeah so it does look a bit more stark in the camera, I will say that, but that gives you some idea as to where I'm going with some of these things. Just some fresh tape. I mean, it's just me personally that thinks these were masked off and painted this way. You know, I can't, I can't say for sure. You know, I'm, I'm not I'm not an expert. I just go with what I see and what we try to forge when we're painting, um, you know, replicas like this. You know, it's just you know we we all try to be uh, master forgers. Of ILM's work, and it's really hard. It is. It, it is difficult to get the the right um, the right look about it all. You know, it's um, it's not easy. And what I've learned over time. And also spending a lot of time listening to Guy Cowan. I've learnt so much in the respect of working in a quick, you know, slap happy manner, not being too pedantic about things, you know. I mean, we all know that ILM never built these things, they're uh, museum displays, they're all very rough and ready, but as I said before, it's, it's, it's art, it really is art, it's, uh, it's art and chaos, and all I'm doing here is just um, going from memory of what I see on the sand crawler. But this is more about just some simple, real, real simple quick techniques to achieve that kind of look. I mean, I am not an amazing painter. I don't proclaim myself to be. But I do what I can with what I've got. You know, um, I mean, if you wanted to just break that up a little bit as well. See, I've just I've just ripped the tape there. And I'll do. As I said, oh, this is just random. So I've just ripped it there. Not not do, done too hard edges. Okay. It just breaks it up a little bit. You know, if I was, you know, I'm gonna maybe some misting at the top of it. Yeah. Whoops. A bit too much there. 
Okay. You know, that kind of thing. So when we talk about like streaks and stuff, you know, it's really simple sort of technique like this. As I said, this is just real quick. Um, yeah, rough, rough and rough and ready um, way of doing it. You know, if I was, if, you know, if I, if I was painting this on a on a miniature, I would be taking a lot more care. Yes, I would. You know, I'd be, uh, I'd be a lot more uh, methodical. But you don't have to be so anal and let it scare you. And what I'm doing here is just a piece of styrene that costs nothing, you know. And just testing out some colours. You know, I'm just literally putting a few scribe lines in it. And uh, just shooting some colour on it. And that's it. Yeah, simple, really simple. So you haven't got to be shooting this kind of stuff for the first time on your miniature. You know, you can just uh, take a piece of styrene, maybe put some familiar panel shapes on it, and um, yeah, just have some practice runs. I mean, this you know took me all of just three minutes to scribe and just you know bla you know blasted some brown on it, blasted some darker brown on it, and started with some of this jazz. And um, yeah, it's already kind of having a you know an effect of um, you know looking a little bit different. To just a brown, a brown piece of plastic, and what I'll do then, you know, you know, we go on about misting. Try and show you what misting would do. Just taking a little little panel like that, and. Uh, Just using a little bit of grime, yeah. That's just a, you know, just a light mist of grime there. You know, you can even start messing around with some of the panels that you put on. I mean, you can even, you know, if you're that way inclined, you can even start adding. You know, stuff like that. Yeah, just just practice. That's all it takes. It really is just practice. You know, and it's just a case of um, getting more comfortable with uh, using techniques you might not normally use if you're uh, into like scale model building. You know, th these are topical techniques that you may not. you may not be totally comfortable with. I mean, I've got to say, I mean, when it comes to scale modeling, I'd be out of my comfort zone, you know, uh, you know, when it comes to painting a, you know, something like an F14 with all that amazing marbled pattern all over it, you know, that some of these guys do meticulously, I'd be absolutely clu just clueless. I I'd be completely lost. I wouldn't know where to start. But I've just found more of a, a comfort zone in this. So okay, you're starting to get a, you know, an idea of, um, you know, just simple things that you can do.
topically over your base coat and uh, have at it and as I said just, just practice on some styrene you know right what I'll do I mean <laughs> it's, 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 it's not looking great but anyway it gives you some idea right so what I'll do now I'll go in and I'll probably start adding some probably some um, uh, black streaks um, I mean there's things I think there's engine black uh, on the crawler so I could maybe start adding a little bit of that maybe a bit of grimy black we'll just mess around with a few streaks and stuff so I'll get uh, I'll get some black loading up in the brush and we'll see what happens then right then guys same thing real rough masking just a load of streaks and stuff for now and I've got some um, um, oh, grimy black archive x grimy black in the brush it's very greeny black but we'll see what it does I'm not really sure So I'm just going to demask those. Oops. And uh, yeah, so okay, you've got just a few just random black streaks. Now, what I'll do is same as before with the uh, with the grind. I'll just go back over and just. You know, just do various, uh, various ones at, oops, at random. Just create these little runs and stains. And I mean, this can, you know, this can apply to quite a few models. I mean, some of the, uh, some of the starfighters have the same sort of effect. Where it's just, um, just a masked off streak, you know. Um, sometimes it's just freehand airbrush. Other times, you know, you can see that it, it, it has got a quite, um, you know, a, a definitive uh, mask line. So let's just uh, do some more of these. Uh, yeah, see where we go from there. I mean, the other thing, I mean, you can also just take a bit of tape. I'm just going to mask it off from here. Um, and just start randomly. You know, freehand. hand streaking down uh, you know you can always remove the nozzle off the brush and oops he says looks so easy when that Simmons does it you know it really does <laughs> Let's dry that off. Yeah, okay. Still going a bit heavy, but hey ho. Um, and then, yeah, just to break up some of the uniform uh, of the mass stripes. 
just intermingle them with some uh, just uh, freehand jazz yeah so all pretty uh, simple fare and then I mean you know if you really wanted to get a all right mucky oily splat I'll, I'll see how this goes because my pressure is high Pressure's a bit high to pull that off at the moment, but as I said, you know, you can you can try different things like that just to achieve. Um, uh, yeah, uh, just to achieve different things with the um, with the airbrush rather than just relying on. Uh, Rather than just relying on masking tape and, uh, and masking everything off, uh, you know, give it a more um, organic would be the word I'm looking for. And I'm just, I'm just streaking real thin, grimy black across that now. I said this is all on the cuff guys. You know, I've never painted one of these. But I'm just uh, doing stuff. You know, some spatter even. I don't know. Has it got any spatter on it? Not a clue. But you know, it's some blobs and as I said guys, there's, there's no right or wrong with this stuff. And especially since the uh, the birth of guys um, Archive X, the research into paint has just become, yeah, it's become a thing. There are people out there that um, dismiss using the uh, the accurate hues because they feel, I don't know, maybe that they're too good for it. I really don't know. That one baffles me. But it's not about um, just having, you know, the paint as a, as a measuring stick. It's about having some accurate hues to just get you going. I mean, I've used three colours here, but it looks like I've used way more. I mean, to my eye, it looks like I've used a lot more than just three colours, okay? Um, but, as I said, it, it's more about... Um, it's a toolbox. You know, it's just another tool in the box. It's how you use it. I mean, you can't go around discounting having accurate paint hues or paint hues that are more accurate and give you a much more beneficial focal starting point because then you might as well start discounting donor parts you know you might as well start saying well you know a certain part on a model if it's from an eight rad you might as well go and use something from a 
an F14 or a, or a McLaren M23 or what's the point in even researching it so you know we try and research this stuff you know because we want to we we want to we want to make these models better this is the final thing you'll ever put on a model the paint it's what sells the model sure amazing build work is amazing build work but the very last thing you'll put on a model is paint you at least want it to to look about right um i'm rambling anyway uh what i'm gonna do i'm gonna uh get some um reefer orange and i'm just gonna start putting some reefer orange on this now via topical effects and see how that looks so uh let's go with that right guys i'm gonna try put some just topical reefer orange by way of a sponge on here now bear with me because um yeah this is uh this is so random and i'm not comfy with it <laughs> As John showed you guys the other day, rotate the sponge around to get a non repeating pattern. Yeah, and we start getting that. Now, what I'll do, I'll carry on a bit. I'm just going to go along just randomly. Splodging this on. In the vain attempt at creating something that at least resembles a sand crawler. But as I said, it's not a sand crawler, it's just a thing that I'm Putting colour on. Let's try and demonstrate in some hairbrain way of using some of these techniques can yield pretty decent results. And like I said, you know, this is all in the space of an hour or so, I think, or something like that so far. I'm not, you know, I've had a cup of tea in between, but you get the idea. I'm just, you know, kind of lodging away and yeah you know this is very much a topical application okay right uh, I don't know whether there's any further down on the crawler but you know we'll do a little bit a wee bit more maybe uh, slightly less a gradient okay right there you go so dry that off a bit in the styrene but anyway okay so 
see that? <laughs> I'm melting it. But anyway, gives you some idea now. Um, some of the topical uh, applications there. I mean, go in and hit them a little deeper. I think there are some very more, you know, some much more starker um, orange spots on the crawler. As I said, I'm you know, not really sure. Um, but that gives you an idea of the topical application there. It, you know, it's not perfect. It's not exact by no means. Take this as gospel as I'm saying. This is how you paint one of these things. But it's, um, you know, it, it's a road to it almost. It, it, it is a way of doing it. It's a topical application. We don't know if ILM use sponges, you know. We really don't know. It could have all been done by paintbrush, but it was definitely topically applied, and not, um, you know, what might, some might think is, you know, maybe latex work. It, you know, it's really not. It's not latex work. It, it's all just topically applied paint. But what a way to apply paint! You know, it's such an amazing um, thing. You know, not. Not just the sand crawler model itself, but just the, you know the, the the way it was painted, you know the the, the way it actually uh, it looked on screen, the way the model looks today, it, it's uh, yeah, it's fantastic. Um, yeah, but anyway, guys, I mean, you know, this is all just um, just really basic, basic, basic brass tacks kind of uh, approaches to. Um, you know, pulling this off but what I'll do I'm just I'll do do a couple of like passes of grime over this just to put a, a misting pattern across it so and then just just wrap it up then as, as I said it's just a very basic way to show just a few techniques that might help a few out so let me get some grime in the brush right guys grime loaded and then we're going to do more of a, a pull back uh, misting pattern now so all I'm going to do, a good distance away from the object you're shooting at, and I'm just going to start adding some grime. If I, what I need to do here. Okay, we're not zoomed in on the camera losing any resolution, so See, all I'm doing I'm just letting a very fine mist of grime paint just land on that from a distance and what that's doing is whoops, a bit of a spit there He said, right again. I think my brush needs a clean, but anyway, you know, you get the idea. I've put a, I put a layer of, um, of grime on there, uh, you know, that, that's a very handy thing to, uh, to do just a little bit of, um, a little bit of misting uh, get some more light on there maybe but it just uh, it subdues everything yeah you can just see it there it ages it and it gives it a very uh, grey tone you know if you see a lot of the uh, miniatures in the flesh they're not uh, they're not all uh, these crazy saturated tones guys trust me on that they're very very different to the eye they're very very muted and it's all very very fine artwork um, so yeah misting is um, it's a really important little string to your bow um, to actually achieve a more authentic looking paint job and as I said, I'm not telling you guys how to suck eggs. And I'm not telling you I'm this amazing painter. I'm really not. Oh, I get my, I, I, 
I'd say I'm an average painter, you know, a weekend warrior. Uh, but um, yeah, if anything I ramble on about here or I've done today helps anyone in any way, then you know, I've kind of achieved a goal because I've helped someone out. And that's what it should all be about, helping each other out. And you know, just coming down to colour research. You know, why not get involved in some colour research? You know, who who would not want the accurate hues on their model? You'd be crazy not to, wouldn't you? Um, but as I said, guys, you know, this, this was just a real quick slap dash, scruffy bit of fun, just slapping some colours on a cheap piece of plastic, uh, just to try and get a you know an idea of you know what you can achieve and what you can have a go at you know I mean you, you can uh, get a cheap plastic kit have a practice on that you can uh, get some scrap styrene You know, before you even think about touching a studio scar subject, why not get a you know a cheap plastic kit of the subject you want to build to practice run on? But if you're looking to just do colour and technique research, you know, practice, hone your skills, this is the best way to do it. Yeah, not like some people out there painting stark colours of flow quill paint on bits of plastic trying to prove a point that's just mental you know that's that's just bonkers start using the the, the the paint for what it's intended for you know very rarely do you see anything painted in the star wars universe using flow quill or in our case archive x paints using the fully saturated tone of the base color yeah, it doesn't happen, you know, so testing all your colours on bits of plastic, you can do that till you're blue in the face, but until you're going to start doing this kind of thing, you know, just, just having a bit of fun, just, as I said, this is not my comfort zone, I know nothing about this model, you know, I'm not trying to uh, say this is how you should paint, I'm not, I'm just saying, you know, these are a few techniques that I use, and if they're any good to you, have at it, um, but anyway guys, thanks for watching. And listen to me ramble on. Um, it's been fun. Um, any questions, you know, don't hesitate. By all means, ask myself. Um, you know, ask John, ask Guy. You know, we're all part of our uh, FX model miniatures. You know, this is, you know, we just display stuff. We're not a company. We're not, you know, we, 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 we it's just happened by displaying models. And we're all good buddies. Um, but yeah, any questions? ask away um i hope any of this mess helped um if it is it, uh, a help to you i'm happy to do more um paint videos as i said you know john's more the guy for paint he's just he's the paint guy but you know if it does help i've got no problem doing them when i've got the time um um, but and then at the same time, by all means, if you think I'm some crazy hack, uh, tell me to go away. But uh, anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching, and um, I'll speak to you all soon.